Hey, welcome to Watchmen Waiting on the Lord. Today is uh, August 13th, 2023. There's going to, this is going to be a two part thing. There's going to be two subjects in here, and it's going to be peddling the gospel. And uh, has tribulation begun yet? And um, before I even started, this came to my mind because I saw a. Um, I hope everyone's doing well. I saw a video um, this morning. I've seen plenty of Christian videos and, and talking about chat GPT and AI and stuff like that. And uh, when I, when, you know, it wasn't that long ago, I just saw something in the corner of my eye. Um, it wasn't that long ago that, uh, you know, just chat GPT came out, right? And all of a sudden, it's just coming like a big wave. And um, it interested me in the beginning. And, and uh, I went to ChatGPT. I went to their login page. And I, I swear, something inside me, you know, it said you have to sign up. And something stopped me right there and said, don't go any further. And then I realized, like, you know, if I get into this, then who, who knows? Some of you might say, oh, you know, it's no bother, you know. You know, um, what, whatever people might, might say, and I, say, and I don't care. I'm going to make a comparison. I'm going to give you an example, okay? Every, every Christian has some, you know, some, you know, we have bad thoughts. We have sinful thoughts. We do sinful things. And uh, some of those sinful behaviors can lead to things. So like in my life, um, uh, thinking about sexual things and, and that type of thing, um, would I would be getting sleep paralysis dreams. And those sleep, if you've ever had sleep paralysis, you know that in those, in those events, those things are, are demons. And if you haven't had them, you have no probably have no idea what I'm talking about. But my point is that, and here's another here's another example. So it doesn't matter. The goal for a Christian is to try to stop sinning. Here is another example. Before I was born again, before I was born again, I remember I was in a very stressful way because of something that happened to me. And I was, I was delving into, um, into uh, tarot readings. I wasn't paying people. I wasn't. I was just watching the videos. And um, you know, those things spit about half truth, half nothing. And and for the most time, it's it's maybe a bit of truth. But I got lost in that because I was in a very stressful way, before I started really, really studying scripture and um, I stopped doing that and I got better and I stopped a whole lot of things and I stopped getting those sleep paralysis dreams that says something chat GPT is no how tell me how is chat GPT any different than tarot how? I don't understand. You, like, you know, write in the comment section. Tell me how you think it's different. You're conjuring up something that isn't a human. So, if you know about tarot, you know about um, Ouija boards, you know, you're conjuring up a spirit. You think you're doing any different with ChatGPT? You're asking it questions. And, uh, and, and uh, from what I heard today, you know, like people... Um, you know, there's a chat, there's a, an AI Jesus app you can go to. And I'm not endorsing that, guys, because if you start going to that, you're going to ha start having bad karma because that's just like a carved image or an idol. It may sound enticing to go and ask you questions and stuff, but I'm telling you, that's a bad way to go for a, for a true, real Christian, somebody who wants to follow God. Um, those things are going to lead us to very bad plays. So I wanted to say that. Okay, so this is, I got to make sure this is recording.
peddling the gospel? And then are we in tribulation? Wait, is it? Okay. So peddling the gospel. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 17. Uh, this is the New King James Version. Uh, we are not, as so many, peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God and Christ. So, I am pointing this at everyone, but I'm pointing this especially to people, not the blatant ones out there, you know, like the Joel Osteens and, and Kenneth Copeland's, not those. You'll see. So what exactly does that mean? It could mean several things. People pretending to be spiritual to make money off of God or Bible believers who want to make money from it. I've discussed this before, but this is this is a bit different. It's easy to spot, but the more I've learned about Scripture, the easier it is to see that even the most respected and influential teachers are peddling the gospel, you know, like uh, I got a PayPal in my, my link, or, or you mention it right at the beginning, you know, it's like, are you going to mention G you're going to mention money before Jesus Christ? Yes, I understand. Now, I'll get to this. I'll get to this. Um, a pastor should make money without hesitation of thought. Okay, what constitutes? That's the question. What constitutes a pastor or a ministry? This is my view. Does a YouTube video constitute a real ministry? I suppose some would, but I personally, I don't believe they do. You know, if it's just content creation and you're speaking, you're not interacting with your people, I don't personally call it a ministry. I think you have to be right in with people. If there's no interaction between the video maker and the believers, it's not a ministry. Because ministries support people, and they should. Are video creators ministering by sharing the gospel? Yes. But uh, can they participate? And I don't mean the comment section either. I mean, you got to be able to help your, your flock. And I understand people talk back and forth and a lot of good things happening, but I'm talking about peddling the gospel. With anything else in life, making money is fine, but it's an altogether different issue when it's the free gospel of Jesus Christ. I said this in my other video. Um, so, yeah, I understand there are people who are content creators who make really good things and people give them money to, to make better things. But what I'm talking about is people who have like a love of getting this money and are using it uh, for, for the reasons you already know. You know in your heart what I'm talking, in your heart what what I'm speaking about and I said this in uh, a previous video I wondered one of my first questions before tackling this subject was if Billy Graham was charging um, I wondered if he was charging people throughout his ministry because I just couldn't picture him doing that and he didn't pardon me I gotta take a little break with the uh, give me a sec Billy Graham understood that the gospel should be free. Can you imagine how much money Billy Graham could have made if he wanted to, and people still would have gone to him, by, I think by the same amount of people. A lot has changed. God should be free. Isn't the goal to attract and not push away people? This really bothers me. Can you imagine Jesus or uh, Paul the Apostle saying mid-sentence but only for the subscribers paid portion only like think about that that makes you laugh it's really you know it's it's not it's not funny that's what they do what if you don't have money it goes against it goes it goes against god 
God should God God should charge them. The only uh, uh sorry, the ones I'm speaking of in this video aren't the Kenneth Copelands. It's the real believers, or the people who say they are real believers. The Kenneth Copelands are are blatantly obvious. Um, you know, they're overt. Those types of false pastors will get what they deserve. I watch a ton of Christian videos, so I've picked up on things. Do this the next time you watch a Christian video. When you turn when you turn it to whatever video you're you like, and especially you know podcasts, look in the background to see if there are any books either on the shelf or on the table in front of them. There's nothing wrong with writing a book and making money from it, but it, to me it appears that probably 75% of people are, are promoting that way. I just think you gotta leave it out. Do you think God really wants it? Like, put it somewhere else, you know? And that reminds me, um, and I wrote a message to him yesterday, and uh, he's got a lot of followers. You know, Curb Ministries, I like him. I think he's he's a pure person, and the people I'm attracted to are people who are pure. He can make 600 grand just from just from the Google ads if he wants, but he doesn't take it. And um, just think about that. He doesn't trust himself, and and whatever he doesn't put a PayPal. Imagine if he did that and put a PayPal, and and did sponsors. He could make like. Two million a year, but he doesn't do it. I told him he could do PayPal though, and and give that money to um, to people who really need it, because we're in a time where people really need money. So, so those are the pure people that that I just think God has His eyes on. So why do I press this topic? Not only because it's wrong, but because there are poor people in poverty. Um, who might like to hear the rest of that video or go to a conference. So uh, there are videos that I've happened to. I, I'm not going to pay to hear the rest of that. That's just stupid. And that's another thing. Conferences, uh, you know, where they charge. Um, some of them aren't money makers. And, you know, they, they just pay for cost and hotel and stuff like that. But uh, so, but a lot of them do. Again, I don't mean people like Joel Osteen because uh, he's... He doesn't believe in the same God that I believe in. That's my personal opinion. I don't mean to disrespect him, but uh, but he, he doesn't even speak about God. Uh, yeah, he speaks about the prosperity gospel, and that's a false gospel, so that's not my gospel. Um, pardon me, i got to take a sip. i got to take breaks in my, my chest and in my voice. Just give me a second. And you know what one of the things is, is that, and I'm not kidding you, I have a Shopify store, I just I just opened up a Shopify store for uh, selling beeswax candles. I'm not kidding you, and I was, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to tell people, I'm going to leave the link in the description box. I'm not kidding you, right, like right before I was going to make this video and I realized what the topic was, and I'm not going to do that, but um, yeah, just to give you an idea. Okay, so switching gears here. So that's that's how I feel about that. I think God looks on people and y you know exactly what it means to peddle the gospel. You don't involve money in the word of God. You don't make money off the word of God. You don't make God, God's word a business proposition. And if you can't make money from God, you know, how many people would turn away? That's the question. If these people who are making videos and they're so happy and they're making videos, I have to wonder if it's because they're getting a lot of PayPal donations. I'm just, I'm not accusing anyone and I'll never use people's uh, names except what I said with Kenneth Copeland and Joel Osteen. But anyway, switching gears here, there's only so much you can say about that. I don't find it's a good idea to make uh, 
God and salvation a business opportunity and there are so many people doing that um, oh another one you know there, there's a lot of people who are you know saying uh, people with testimonies and you don't know for sure but you know at least 90% of them likely aren't true and they say here's my testimony I went to hell uh, I spoke to Jesus and after they make that video they get a following and they make a lot of money and you know why because it's by the devil that's why if it was by God they wouldn't be making money that's just um, Jesus what was I saying so people are, are you know it's it's about people with itching ears right um, with, with, with what I just said there you know with those testimonies people like to hear those stories and they believe them okay so so this is uh, pardon me I just got to take it by here cut my stomach pardon me a sec So this is a big one, I'm sure, um, for no reason, but people will take offense at this. Has the tribulation begun? So this is my personal opinion, and uh, it's kind of changed because of what I see in the world. What an interesting question, considering what's happening throughout the globe right now. Before you bite my head off and, and say, you have no idea how bad the tribulation will get well yeah I do because I've read over revelations many times and I've studied revelations and Daniel uh, and the Old Testament and the New Testament I'm aware what the seals trumpets and bowls will do the debate is whether this is a precursor what we see right now or is this tribulation What's right, happening right now has no particular name in the Bible except tribulation. So, write in the comments section, what is this that's happening right now? Because there's no word in the Bible for it. The only, the only passage that fits what's happening right now is Matthew 24 and Luke 21 and Mark 13. Personally, um, I believe it has begun because... Um, it's just in the beginning stages and that's just what it is let's take a look at the world right now and by no means is this an exhaustive list if you're in a safe zone um, like a first world country that hasn't been affected yet but you probably have politically it soon will um, it soon will however that will look so weather all, all over the world, that's going on for sure. Have you seen Beijing, by the way? They're trying to censor the stuff that's happening there, by the way. They said like 18 dead and 36 injured. It's probably a thousand times that. I bet you it is. It's probably at least a hundred times that. You're injured or never. Um, sorry, it said, um, it was like uh, the, in, the, the they made the injuries higher than or sorry lower than the deaths it was very strange anyways there's videos saying they're covering up and showing their cover-ups <sighs> go tell the Ukrainian military that it hasn't begun or the areas all around there 400,000 soldiers are dead that doesn't mean anything um, and that's just on their side and not including their civilians. That doesn't include Russian soldiers dead and civilians. We're starting to resemble World War I trench warfare. Have you seen their battlefields like littered with holes? You can look at it probably on Google Maps or Earth or whatever. So it's starting to resemble World War I trench warfare industrial death. Well, it is. Go tell that to the Indian Christian believers who are hiding out in forests or wherever they're hiding um, while their churches are being burned down. Go tell that to the Turks who lost 50,000 dead in one fell swoop in, in the earthquake. 
Or how about the six or seven places that had one to two feet and mostly two feet, 24 inches of rain in 12 to 24 hours and have their cities drown like Beijing, um, Orlando, India, Pakistan, New York State, Vermont, was it? I think it was Vermont, um, Nova Scotia, the list goes on. Or how about 7 million illegal migrants crossing over in just a period of three years at the U.S. southern border? People underestimate what that is. And now the sanctuary cities are failing with streets of tens of thousands, 100,000 in New York City, of migrants in endless lines that can't get food and water, the basic amenities. Or how about the nonstop multiple province-wide like Canada-wide, statewide, they're like 15 or 15 to 25 different states are in just one large storm cell. I've lived in Ottawa for 45 years and never experienced a tornado. I've seen clouds so they, until three years ago. I was always a storm lover. So there was a tornado, two of them, the, three years ago. Then two more happened. Uh, I think it was a year after, and now every major storm spawns a tornado or, or shelf cloud, stuff we never saw before. Um, every typhoon causes a major flood in every country it encounters. This is far from normal. Just one flood would steal the major news networks for one week just four years ago. Just one of these incidents would steal the news. That would be the story we're desensitized you get that right you know right now I just I start it today when I hear something bad uh, like in a word document because I write stuff I'm gonna list the things that start and I'm gonna make a video my next video um, so today's August 13th 2023 I'm gonna write down the things that happened since from today just from today and I'm gonna list them to you so it would steal the major news networks for, for at least a week, just four years ago. In the blink of an eye, the globe's weather switched, like flipping a light switch. Hail. Have you seen the hail around the world? And I'm not, I'm not talking about small hail. In, uh, I believe it was somewhere in the area of Spain. They're showing um, hail the size of cantaloupe. Uh, cantaloupe. And it's not normal to see baseball-sized hail all around the globe. I don't mean in every country, but in, in, in the storms. It isn't abnormal um, yet. No matter what the climate does, I don't believe in that this is the, it's climate change. Like, the climate is changing as in, you know, things change, but not climate change like they're talking about. CO2 is needed for the atmosphere, so we need more CO2 to create green life. And they supposedly want to block the sun now. I don't know to what uh, degree they're actually being serious about that. But uh, I wouldn't put it past Bill Gates and uh, whoever's talking about it. I think it was Biden. Um, I can hear someone saying now, Dave, you don't understand how hot God will make the globe or only certain parts of the globe because it's already occurring if you haven't been paying attention. I would say half the globe is in a long heat wave of which these countries, and it was last year too, and the year before. But every year gets worse, like Matthew 24. The frequency and intensity gets worse. Are all breaking previous records. I predicted this last year, by the way, because it was obvious then too what was happening with God's wrath in whatever capacity. In Iran, and this is in the international airport, okay, so... On their tarmac in Fahrenheit, it was 150 degrees. Just give me another sec. I don't like eating on camera, so... So understand this. 
how hot do you think God's going to make the earth? Do you think it's going to make it 200 degrees because he would evaporate us? How are people going to, so just listen, humans can only tolerate a certain temperature before heat stroke kills them. I got heat stroke once and it was bad. Um, it's very uncomfortable. Um, and we're getting close to that. So you have to recognize that. How can people blaspheme God like in Revelation? It's because of the heat. <clears throat> if it's over 150 to 175. Like, I don't think it's going to get hotter than that. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think it's just going to make it so hot to the point that people just can't stand it. It doesn't make sense. North Korea is ready for an offensive. So that's the first time you've heard them ever say that. They said they're ready for an offensive. It was just wars and rumors of wars. Taiwan is close to being in a war. So is the U.S. and China. NATO versus uh, Russia and the states. But let's face it, it's World War III by proxy with Iran, North Korea, China, and all of NATO. I don't think anyone recognizes the carnage in Ukraine. Because you know why? Because social media, um, corporate media, legacy media isn't covering it. So how would we know? We have to look through other sources. I watched an ex-CIA spy explain, of which I already estimated that China's best opportunity to take Taiwan is with Joe Biden. But in the election cycle, right before they uh, decide, you know, while they're doing their debates, but it's, there's probably not going to be a debate, but uh, when it's the most complicated, because that's their best opportunity. Uh, I don't know much about Africa, but I know it's not looking good. And uh, these countries are the countries listed in Ezekiel that will come against Israel, like Sudan and Libya. Well, Sudan is Ethiopia, by the way. Um, the prophecy is falling into place perfectly like foretold. Israel is a hair's breadth from civil war. Like, they're, they have to be bombing Iran very soon. Like, you know, people keep saying that and, and whatever, but um, obviously that's got to come. If they're there right now, which they say they are, they, they've been able to develop a bomb for, I don't know what it is now, probably three months. And Iran is like a prowling wolf on all its borders, proc by proxy. I won't feel sorry for Iran's destruction or Syria's. And uh, but it's the, the people. I know it's not the people. I pray it's the it's the governments. Uh, what shocks me the most, but it doesn't surprise me, is the lack of recognition by the United Nations about the Iran threat. You see that to Israel. I support Israel. Okay, I love them. I love them. And eventually, the world. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, and, and like the real threat is Iran to the world. That if they had the chance, they would take out America, guys. They don't seem to recognize that a bomb will threaten everyone. Or how about, or how about this? 18 new volcanoes have woken up in a period. I counted them all. 365 days. 365 days. That's how many volcanoes um, have awoken. I don't mean regularly.